that's all the tools done that we need. So I'm going to load up CryEngine now. Now for the actual basics of CryEngine, I will always go into the CryEngine documentation, which is actually quite thorough and it shares a lot of similarities with CryEngine 3 anyway. So you can use both of these to kind of, once you have a basic understanding, you can use both of them to get familiar with everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level and I'm going to call put this under Cause hallway. And press OK. So this is the CryEngine UI. So we've got the viewport in the middle, the create objects panel on the right, and the level explorer on the left. And I've attached a console here. I'm not going to go into all the basics of CryEngine or anything like that. Um, there's plenty of videos out there that will do that for you. But I'm going to go into the specifics that you need to think about when using this for Star Citizen content creation. Um, I'll put some links to other channels. I'll try and mind to flash it on the screen now, and I'll put links in the description for um, channels and videos relating to actually getting started with CryEngine in general. But these are going to be focused almost entirely on the Star Citizen aspect of it that we are concerned with. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to kind of just go over how to make a basic scene. Alright, so we're going to make a basic scene and animate a character. How do we do this? Well, First off, I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call this uh, in the left hand level explorer here. I'm going to right click and click new folder and just create a folder called environment. And I'm going to make a new layer call and call it set hallway. And double click it to set it as the active layer. And then drag it into environment. And then on the create objects panel, I'm going to go into brush objects. And you can see here all the objects that are loaded in from the game. And I'm going to go into building sets human, uh, low tech, alpha, interior. Now, it, it took me quite a long time to get familiar with ev where everything is in here. So, you know, don't be dissuaded if it takes you a while as well. It's perfectly fine. And let's say I'm going to create a room small. Uh, I'm going to go to floor. And I'm going to go to floor straight. So what we got here is room small, floor straight, and the document and the way this is set up is there are dimensions by a lot of the modular pieces. So in this case, we have got room small, floor straight, four meters by four meters by zero zero two five meters, which is twenty five centimeters. So if we drag and drop that in here, you can see we got a panel from one of the low tech alpha places, and I can't remember where that is because I hardly ever played the game. Um, so let's see. So what we'll do, we'll make a basic hallway. Uh, see what we got here. There we go. I'll take it off. So let's say we take this guy here. I'm gonna press one on the keyboard. All right. So what I've done, I've just enabled the um, keystroke thing at the top there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press Control, Control D on the keyboard, and I'll duplicate. And then I'm gonna duplicate again. And I'm gonna duplicate again. And now I'm going to bring in a wall. So I'm going to close down wall and then bring up, uh, close down floor and then bring up wall here. And let's just try and find wall straight. So we've got two by one, uh, four by one, that'll do. And I'm going to press two on the keyboard and rotate 180 degrees. And I've got this snapping preferences thing up, up in here. And I've got grid and angle snapping turned on here. Uh, to get this snapping preferences, I believe it's under edit and it's under align and snap and click on snap settings. And then you can just uh, pin it to a panel if you wish. All right, so next I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to duplicate again, duplicate again. I'm going to select all of them using control and clicking. And then I'm going to rotate all of these here as well. And there's two ways you can rotate. If you wish, you can do it the way I just did there. Or you can go to edit, then coordinates, and then you've got local and world. I got these set to a keybind, which is for me is control shift and W, and control shift and L, which allows me to just do it as if it's a world or a local axis. You see here, we've got this little hallway that's built. And the next thing we're going to do is just going to add a, a roof, uh, which is over here. 
do the same again just give it a nice basic roof so now we have a hallway but this hallway isn't lit so how are we gonna light this hallway well here's what we can do again I'm just going into the absolute basics here uh, I will be going into this in a lot more detail in the future I promise Oh, well, you know what? We'll add a light and we'll just pretend it's on. So I want to go into the material details in another video. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But it's not a big deal. So let's say we put this guy just up here. And then what we're going to do is this. So we're going to go to components and then light. And then we're going to use a point light, which is, which is here. And we're going to bring that up and put it next to the light here. Again, I'm not really going into the absolute basics of CryEngine. This is this is just kind of quickly getting the basics down. I'm going to set the diffuse to 0 0.5 in the properties here, and then maybe 0 0.25. No, actually, 0 0.5 is very good as well. And set the minimum. In fact, no, I'm not going to use any shadows on that. I'm going to bring that down to maybe here. Okay. And one thing I'm going to do is we can see the shadows from the sun are shining through these gaps here because these shadows are only generated one way. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create a designer box and I'm going to just scale it that way. Create a nice and fat. And I'm going to put that up there. So now we've got a hallway that's lit pretty much just by this light. Again, this is super basic. And I'm going to do that there. Okay. Just got this nice little hallway here. And what I'm going to quickly do is go over how to make a track view sequence in this as well, so you guys can get started. But of course, since we want to make a character walking down this hallway, we want to what we want to do is I'm just gonna make a new layer. What we want to do is create a character and we don't have a character yet, so I'm gonna show you how to make a character. So I'm gonna save this layer real quick. And we're gonna go into tools, animation, character tool. I've got it open here. And we're going to load it in and there are a lot of animations and up in the top right here you're probably going to get a lot of errors relating to these animations. Unfortunately I don't know a way around this currently uh, but since we're using CryEngine for content creation, uh, sorry cinematic creation rather than game creation, uh, we don't have to worry about it too much. So we're going to go into, so what it'll do once it's loaded up, it will load up all of these folders and what we're interested in character is characters human and a folder here called mail v7 cdfs this is a folder where we save all the cdf files these are called character definition files and what they allow us to do is basically take a base skeleton and then attach things to it which is pretty cool so this is what we're going to do we're going to go to file a new character because on your one you won't have any of these yet and um, when it opens up this menu here we're going to go to objects, characters, human, mailv 7 cdf. In my case, I'm going to go to Alex. I'm going to call it car engineer, engineering character. And we're going to press create. Next is this is what we'll get. I'm going to quickly save that. The first thing we need to do is define a skeleton. Now, for a male character, it's objects, characters, human, mailv 7 or for a female, it could be female v2. So we're going to male v7 and then export and then VHM skeleton v7. You need to be a little bit patient with this because it is there are a lot of animations it's loading. Um, so it does take a little while. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is go into display options and then show the joints. And we can see here we have the joints for the character. 
So of course it's not got any attachments on him yet, so let's give him some attachments. So we're going to go under attachments, insert, I'm going to change the type to skin attachment. And let's get some geometry. So we're going to go to objects, characters, human, male v7. And let's say we want this guy to be, let's say he's an RSI explorer. So we're going to go to armor, RSI, um, ex in fact, no, we're just going to just do a basic flight suit. So armor, RSI, flight suit. I'll open this here. It will be silver in the screen here. That's not a big deal. It's perfectly fine. And of course, our guy here needs a jetpack and he needs a helmet. So we're going to go add another attachment and we'll do this for the jetpack. So same again. Alternatively, you can use the folders here. It'll be seven armor, RSI, uh, jetpack. And we'll call this YC jetpack. And I'll add a jetpack on the back here. And same again. We'll do for the helmet. So what we want here is the flight suit helmet, which is here. And then I'll click OK and save. Unfortunately, it doesn't show up here. I'm not completely sure why at the minute, but that's what we've got. OK, so I've created a new layer called Cinematic Hallway. And what I'm going to do is just turn off the ability to select objects in the set so it's easier to work with. And in the Create Object menu, we're going to go to uh, Legacy Entities in a moment. I press save, there we go. And I'm going to go to physics and anim object. And um, we'll call this CE for anim, anim object, uh, character. And I'm going to scroll down a bit and go to model and then click open. And we're going to find the character definition file we have saved earlier. So characters human male v7cdf, on my case it's Alex, and then cry engineering character. And as we can see, it's loaded him up into the scene. Nice. And you can see here, it's got the layer blend shader applied, which is pretty cool. You can see here, you got all the detail up close as well, which is pretty cool. So what we'll do is we're going to make a nice little track view character, uh, track view sequence with this guy, cinematic sequence. So what else do we need? Well, we're going to need the camera, aren't we? So let's bring in the camera. So that's in the create object menu, misc, camera, just here. And let's rotate this guy 90 degrees. And let's say he's just walking down the hallway, minding his own business. So what we'll go, we'll go to tools and then to track view. And this is the track view. This is the cinematic tool in CryEngine. And it is really actually quite powerful. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go to file, new. I'll call this SEQ underscore uh, hallway zero, and then we're going to select the camera, select the, app, the character, and click in here. Click on right click and add selected entity. And as you can see, what we've done is we have brought in them. And we're going to do one more thing as well, and that is add a node. And we're going to add a director node. And what this allows us to do is cut between cameras. Another thing we'll do is click on this cog icon here and it'll allow us to modify the properties of the track view sequence. So let's say the end time, we'll set it to 5 seconds and playback range of 5 seconds and we'll get to work. So if we expand these here, I'm just going to hide the curve editor for now and I'm going to turn on snapping for the time. So if we take the anim character and right click and add track going to add a track called the animation and we're going to add a animation clip so in this is where our builds are going to differ slightly mine has a modified version um, of the track view I won't be releasing that because it's not mine I didn't make it that's up to the guy who made it to release if he wishes to um, but the principles the same so what I'm going to do here in the animation track is double click and it'll create a new keyframe um, in animation. Click on that, and it'll load up all the animations that these um, guys use. And Auto Hockey just crashed. <laughs> One second. There we go. Okay. So what I want, I'm interested in is a walk cycle. So we're gonna just type walk, 
and then maybe slow, a nice slow walk, and then underscore forward. That'll do. So this is where it differs. So on your one, it might just make a keyframe. On mine, it actually shows the animation length in the track view here, uh, which hopefully will be fixed in the future in CryEngine. But for our purposes here, it's not really a big deal. So as you can see here, the animation has updated on our character and he's now walking forward. You'll notice I didn't give him a, hedge, uh, a head. That's because the head material is uh, broken, but I'll make a video dedicated to that on how to fix that in the future. So if you click on the animation key here, and we're going to set that to loop, and we're going to set that to in place. And what that will do is each animation, which is a, what's called a locomotion animation, it translates what's called the root joint. So it'll, it'll translate the position of the character. Uh, unfortunately, if we do it here and turn off in place, it'll animate him forward like it should. But when it comes to the end of the animation, it will snap him back to where he began, which is not what we want. So for the purposes of cinematics, we're going to animate this manually, which is quite easy. So let's get this guy animated. So if, if you click on the character and then click on the record button, Let's take him all the way back to the start. And he's going to animate forward. So what we'll do is go right to the end. And we'll animate him forward like this. And this is just an easy way of doing it. And then what we can see, he is sliding very quickly forward, which obviously isn't very good. So what we'll do, we'll go to view. Sure curve editor and this will load up what's called the curve or graph editor now this thing is unbelievably useful so what we're going to do is just expand it a little bit and we see here we've got a key at the start a key at the back and i've filtered it out so that the position is the position x as we can see here on the little gimbal he is translating in the x-axis here so what i'm doing here i'm just assuming a little bit of knowledge about animation uh, not too much though, because I don't have much myself. And then what we're going to do is select the latter key. As we can see here, the tangents are what are called linear. So it's set to linear again using these keys. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So the actual amount of translation is going to change. So you can see here, if I bring this up, the key slides over there. If I bring it down, then the key slides there. So I'm going to set the time back to five. So what we're interested in is just an animation that stops our guy from sliding too much. So I'm just going to bring him up a little bit there. Okay. Right. So I'm going to just bring the total displacement down. That's better. So you can see here, with a little bit of adjustment, our guys walk in without sliding too much. A little bit more. And now let's animate the camera. So the camera is pretty much the same. So this is what we'll do. Just saving. I'm going to create a new perspective. And I'm going to down here. Automatically for me, it pins down to my bottom left. That's just where I like it. And I'm going to just change a few settings. I'm going to set the resolution to quite low. Uh, so that it gives me the proper aspect ratio and I'm going to go into camera uh, click on camera camera entity camera one so it's now looking at the character through our camera here so now I'm going to move it to the initial position I'm going to press G on my keyboard to just turn off the grid snap so let's say here and let's just rotate him up a little bit. I'm just using some keybinds I made for uh, I'll go into how to make those keybinds in another video this is just a basic thing. We've got a dude here and let's animate the camera to move with the dude. So you can see in the bottom left here what the camera sees. So what I like to do when I've done that is just close the second viewport because it just makes everything a little bit more stable. And I'm going to change the resolution of this perspective viewport here to 
allow us to get a proper aspect ratio of the of what the camera sees, which is what it looks like here. So you can see here we've pretty much created a basic animation sequence of a dude walking forward. And let's say we want to change the field of view. Well, we'll just set a field of view key, uh, keyframe here. And let's say change that to maybe 35. And the rotation, I'm going to set another keyframe at the end here. And let's say we want it to kind of rotate a little bit. So let's say if we do this. there's something cool that he's walking away from and the camera is gonna change from focusing on whatever is really cool in a way to something really cool like where the camera where the character is now look it's just like I'm more important yo and maybe we want to change where the camera is relative to the character so you see here we've got the Y going left to right so maybe if we just change the Y axis a little bit I'm just gonna Expand that a little, and maybe we want the camera, the character, to move left in the frame a little bit, make him a little bit more dominant um, as the shot goes on. So maybe we want to just shift him that way a little bit. And I'm going to change the tangent here. So no, I'm not. Okay, and then maybe set the rotation to. Look at that. Our guy means business. Whoa. All right, so this is all just kind of the basics of how to use the curve editor as well. So I'm kind of modifying the tangents and kind of seeing what happens. And if I want to, I can maybe add another keyframe here and just bring the camera down a little bit. Or maybe do this. Whoa, look at that. And I'm just pressing shift in the middle. Uh, shift in the middle mouse button here and I can just change how it zooms in and out like that. Maybe I just want something like that. So I'm changing the tangent here so it's nice and it's nice and quick. Nice and quick there. There we go. Whoa. You got this. But that's pretty much it. That's how you make a basic cinematic sequence in uh CryEngine using Star Citizen assets. So in this what we've done is we've pretty much imported all the assets into car engine and we've made a basic hallway and a very basic dude walking down a dude walking down the whole cinematic and to render this is pretty simple you just go to tools render sequence and you can set up the options here which i'll do in a later video okay so thanks a lot for watching guys there's going to be plenty more of these in the future and i'll catch you later